in this segment, we, we will see how we can synthesize uh, three-phase AC by using so-called space vector PWM of these inverters. And uh, the advantage is that uh, we can utilize the DC bus voltage uh, in a, a more complete manner. And uh, applications, of course, are wherever uh, these uh, electric drives are used. So uh, we would like to begin by first defining a space vector, voltage space vector. So let's look at this inverter, uh, three-phase inverter. We have a voltage port where we have a voltage uh, V sub D, and we are trying to synthesize some low frequency AC uh, across the, the out, at the output here, and let's arbitrarily say that this point is ground here. Normally it's uh, never grounded, but uh, just for the discussion purposes, to make the, the symbols easier, let's just think of it as ground, okay? So having done that, uh, let's define this uh, voltage space vector, uh, which is really the combination of the three output voltages, VA, VB, and VC, that we would like to synthesize, all right? And uh, these three voltages are multiplied by their axis orientation. So let's think of A phase over here, uh, B phase over here, and C phase over here. So this is at an angle E to the J zero. This is at an angle E to the J uh, 2 pi over 3, and this is at an angle e to the j 4 pi over 3. We measure angles in this direction here. So if you multiply each of the three phase voltages that we will desire to synthesize and multiply them by their uh, space orientation, then we have what we will call a voltage space vector. And this uh, subscript A uh, which is uh, not subscript, superscript A that you see is uh, there to designate that it's with respect to this A phase as the reference, okay? So that's what we are choosing that as the reference. So, uh, you know, each of these uh, three voltages, phase voltages, they can be written in terms uh, of the voltage with respect to this point N. And uh, so you can see here that uh, this, let's just concentrate on this one, VA here, <coughs> this voltage is equal to V voltage of this point with respect to N plus the voltage of this point N with respect to this ground neutral, which we said, let's assume it to be ground just for discussion purposes, okay? And similarly, VB and VC here. <coughs> so if you substitute for VA, VB, and VC uh, in this uh, equation and recognizing that the sum of uh, these three is equal to zero, mathematically we can show, then uh, this uh, voltage space vector can be represented in terms of the output of the pole voltages. Previously, in this equation, it was in terms of the, the voltages across the load, whereas uh, this equation here is uh, in terms of the, the pole output voltages here. <clears throat> and each pole output voltage depends upon, is of course equal to VD times the, the switching signal. And this switching signal Q would be either one or zero, right? So we can write it in terms of the switching signals as well for these three uh, power poles here. So uh, what, uh, what we have to recognize that uh, in this uh, three-phase inverter, regardless of the technique used, uh, there are only uh, technique used for pulse width modulation. Uh, there are eight distinct uh, basic voltage vectors, okay? And uh, because, you know, each switch has two positions, either it's up or down, right? So two to the power three is equal to eight. So there are eight basic voltage vectors that uh, can be produced here. And you can see here that if, uh, you know, pole, if all three poles are down, uh, that's represented by these here. This is, I think the way it is done is this, uh, 
bit is for A, this is for B, and this is for C here. And you can see when all three are down, uh, we have this uh, uh, vector V0, which has a value 0. Because uh, uh, if you plug that in into this equation, that's what we'll get. <coughs> Similarly, uh, in this case, uh, uh, pole A is in up position, whereas pole B and C are in down position. And uh, this uh, can be represented by V1, and which is this vector over here. And this is equal to Vd with an angle of 0 degrees. Similarly, we can go on. Uh, in this case, uh, P is in up position, whereas A and C are in down position. Let's call it V2. And in that case, plugging this into this equation here, we get uh, Vd at angle of 120 degrees, and we get over here. We, we get this basic vector. <coughs> and similarly, V3, uh, V4, uh, I'm sorry, V4, uh, V5, and V6. But uh, so these are the active vectors 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. But in addition, when all three uh, poles are down, we get this zero vector. And similarly, when all three poles are up, uh, if we plug th that into this equation here, the voltage space vector is zero. So the essential, uh, the outcome is that we have six active vectors and then we have two zero vectors. Uh, when the, both all poles are down or all poles are up. So if you are given uh, some voltage that we have to synthesize, V sub S, let's say, is given. We need to synthesize this. Well, we can use uh, these uh, basic vectors uh, to synthesize th that because there's nothing more that we can get out of this inverter, but uh, by time varied averaging, as it's shown over here, we will synthesize uh, this desired voltage vector here. <coughs> so, uh, what we will do is recognizing that this is in sector one, uh, the that waveform that, that uh, those basic vectors we can ha we have seen uh, could be used to define six sectors. And let's say this is sector one here where we need to synthesize this uh, voltage space vector. And we'll make use of adjacent uh, basic vectors and the zero vectors. Okay, so basic adjacent vectors are V1 and V3, and the zero vectors are V0 and V7. So these are zero vectors here. So we'll make use of that. And uh, we'll do this, uh, we'll synthesize this by time weighted averaging. So let's say that uh, we are switching with a time period of T sub S. So we'll divide whatever we get by this time period to get the average. And uh, for X portion of the time of this time period, we'll apply V1. For Y portion of the time, so X portion, we apply V1. For Y portion, we apply this V3. And then for Z portion of the time, switching time period, we apply this zero vector over here. So you can see that x plus uh, y plus z should be equal to 1, okay, because that makes up the whole time period. And uh, as far as this voltage vector is concerned, uh, you know, this 0 doesn't really play any role, and Ts and Ts cancel out here. So what we end up with, what we end up with is this equation here, and, uh, you know, knowing the amplitude and the phase angle, of this uh, voltage sp space vector that we wish to synthesize, we can calculate this x and y from these equations here. And, uh, <coughs> and the pulses that uh, come out of these three uh, voltage uh, uh, switching power poles, uh, VAN, VBN, and VCN uh, are shown over here. Uh, we have a great deal of flexibility how these pulses are produced so long as uh, these, these x, y, and z are uh, satisfied. Uh, so, uh, you know, it can be done using uh, sector calculations and uh, table lookup, or it could be then, uh, the other way could be that uh, we synthesize uh, control voltages based on this information 
and compare it with a triangular wave just like in uh, uh, PWM sine wave. So once again, uh, uh, we have these uh, uh, six active ba uh, basic vectors and uh, two zero uh, uh, basic vectors that we'll get. But what is the limit on the voltage that we can get out of these uh, inverters uh, using space vector PWM? So you can see that uh, since uh, in steady state, the output voltage space vector uh, should remain in constant in amplitude, but rotate, uh, we have this equation here. So it has some maximum amplitude and uh, that can only be uh, given by this uh, circle here at, at the limit. That's how it can be. If this amplitude from one time to the next has to remain constant, okay? So if that's the case and each basic vector has uh, a length of V sub D, uh, we can calculate uh, what this, uh, what the radius of this uh, circle can be. And that is at uh, 30 degrees and it has this value square root of three over two times V D here. <clears throat> so knowing that uh, the, the, the peak of a phase voltage uh, is related to the, the peak of the space vector by this factor two or three, the maximum value that a phase voltage can have is uh, uh, then equal to Vd times, uh, Vd over square root of three, okay? So that's the maximum value of the peak of a phase voltage. So from there, we can calculate the maximum RMS voltage that we can get in this SVPWM. So we'll take this value, we will uh, divide it by square root of two to get the RMS, we'll multiply it by square root of three to get the line to line voltage. And when we do that, we get about 0.7 times VD approximately. Whereas uh, if you look at uh, uh, what happens in a uh, sine PWM, uh, modulated inverter, uh, we get uh, the maximum phase voltage to be Vd over 2, Vd over 2, okay? And if you uh, divide that by square root of 2, we get the RMS value. If you multiply that by square root of 3, uh, we get the line-to-line -line voltage, and that turns out to be about 0 0.612. So you can see that uh, there is, uh, you know, substantial uh, increase in the maximum voltage that we can get using this SVPWM. So there is uh, no reason why we shouldn't be using it, uh, uh, although, you know, the sine PWM is easy to, to understand. It's a sort of an extension of what we see for synthesizing DC and single phase AC. But when it comes to three phase, uh, taking advantage of that uh, nature of three phase, um, we should be able to get more output voltage for a given DC voltage at the voltage port here. <clears throat> so we can see this uh, even without uh, discussing or even mentioning the word space vector. Okay, so let's say you don't want to look at uh, that expression for space vectors. Uh, you want to see how I can do that. Well, uh, these are the three uh, sinusoidal AC voltages we wish to synthesize, shown in red uh, in three different colors. And uh, there's a uh, voltage at the input, Vd, uh, and uh, so, you know, V, and half the DC bus voltage is shown here as well. Okay, Vd over two. So let's just look at one sector where uh, uh, the voltage is, uh, shown in this uh, range over here. And uh, let's look at uh, some time T1 over here, which is right in the middle of this sector. And you can see that uh, phase A voltage uh, shown in red is maximum. And uh, phase C voltage shown in blue is minimum, okay? So those are the two we need to, to uh, worry about or focus on because whatever we do in terms of introducing 
the common mode voltage, uh, there is no problem with phase B. So the difference here, you know, in, in comparison to sine PWM is that in sine PWM, we were introducing a common mode voltage of VD over 2. But there is no reason why we should always introduce a common mode voltage of VD, VD over 2. Whatever we introduce would get canceled out. Okay, so, <clears throat> so what can that be? So, so let's look at this uh, circuit here. Uh, and only phases A and C are shown because uh, B is in the middle and it doesn't really matter, okay? So you can see that uh, as far as the output voltage for uh, pole A is concerned with respect to this point N, it's uh, this common mode voltage, which we need to determine. And let's say we, at this time T1, we are given what this voltage VAN is that we need to synthesize. And uh, the sum of these two will determine the duty ratio of uh, this uh, power pole here. Similarly, for uh, the, the poles for pole C, uh, we can get the duty ratio of uh, that pole here. Now, we have to recognize that uh, this VAN can be uh, between zero and uh, VD. So DA can only be less than one. It cannot be greater than one, we know that. And similarly, VCN is negative, but we had to recognize that DC, this uh, D ratio of pole C must be greater than zero. So those are the two limits that we have to, uh, to respect. And uh, so one way could be that, uh, you know, we are not always at the limit. So we can say that uh, DA is, uh, smaller than 1 by some value delta D. Similarly, uh, DC here is greater than 0 because that's the limit, lower limit on it, is greater than 0 by the same amount delta D over here. Okay, So making use of these two equations, let's add them up, this, this equation and this equation over here, let's add them up and uh, use the fact that dA plus dC is equal to 1, adding these two equations, we can calculate what the common mode voltage ought to be, okay? And that turns out to be half the dC bus voltage, and we would have used just this in sine PWM, but in this case, we have this extra term over here, right here, okay? So we can do this for... Uh, voltages at any instant of time, and we can generalize this, and we can say that uh, the common mode voltage that we will inject for uh, this space vector PWM without ever learning about space vector, it's uh, this half the DC bus, bus voltage plus this term V sub K, which depends on the maximum of these three voltages that we wish to synthesize and the minimum of these three voltages which we wish to synthesize. And you can see if you plot the duty ratio in case of sine PWM, <coughs> it's given by this uh, sinusoidal waveform, whereas in case of SVPWM, it's given by the waveform shown here. And uh, similarly, this 0.5 plus VK over VD is plotted uh, with respect to this line as well. <coughs> so this brings us to the end of this segment where we see how we can uh, make use of uh, SVPWM uh, to fully utilize the DC bus voltage above and beyond what we will get by sine PWM.